Hello learners and welcome to your first video tutorial about projectiles being fired at an angle or how I have cleverly called angled projectiles. So angled projectiles are different from horizontal projectiles because it's all in the name. They are fired at an angle. So they're launched with an initial velocity v naught at some angle, which I will call theta. Now, we're going to start with our projectiles being fired from the ground, or ground level, and then we'll develop our understanding and attack problems where they're fired from an initial height. So, if I fire this projectile from the ground, it would arc up, reach a max height, and then come back down in a nice, smooth, parabolic motion. My acceleration the whole time, if I'm on Earth, will be some value g. And that whole time, that acceleration is pulling down at a constant value. So even at the top, that ball has an acceleration that is g. Now, at the top, if you remember problems de dealing with max height, at the top, v, y is zero because at the top it changes direction. It was rising, but then it is falling. Anytime you have a change in direction, you must first stop. So let's look at how to go about attacking this type of problem. Again, let's draw our projectile fired with some v naught at some angle relative to the horizontal theta. Well, we still separate our x and our y's. And still, the only equation for our x dimension, delta x equals vx t. And still, for the y dimension, all of our kinematics are at our disposal. The only problem, though, is that when it's fired at an angle, my initial y velocity is not zero because it's fired at an angle. It rises up. So how do we go about figuring out what is vx? What is vy, the initial y? Well, we first have to break this vector into its components. Now, what are the components of a vector? Well, it's the x part and the y part. So right here, where it starts, the, the vector, that is my vx. And then right here is my v naught y. So, if you look, I just formed a triangle. So, again, the x is how far over you go in the x dimension. The y is how far you go in the y dimension. Now, how do I get vx? Well, if you look at the triangle here, I know this angle, and let's say that I know v naught. I know what speed it was fired from the cannon. Well, Vx is going to be V naught cosine of theta. Why cosine? Well, this side of the triangle is the adjacent. And ever so useful when you're dealing with components is knowing your trig identities. Adjacent over hypotenuse. My hypotenuse here is the V naught, that initial velocity. So looking at that, v naught y is going to be v naught sine of theta. So here is how you can get and figure out what your initial velocity is in your y dimension and what your initial velocity and really just your velocity in the x direction. Because remember, in the x direction, acceleration is still zero. 
which is why there's no v naught x. It just is the x velocity. It's the speed that it's traversing in the horizontal. So, once you do this, you go about the problem the exact same way. You write down everything that you know about the x dimension. You write down everything you know about the y dimension. And then you go from there. So, let's do an example problem, shall we? Let's say that I have a projectile that is fired at a velocity of, let's do 10 meters per second. That's my V naught. And it's fired at an angle of 30 degrees. So 30 degrees is my theta. And some questions that you might ask, or might get asked. How far does the projectile travel, or the delta x? Another question you might get asked, what is the max height? Okay, so let's look about how to start this problem. First thing is still break up your dimensions and I still have delta x equals vx t. So let's look at solving for delta x. Well, there's the equation for delta x. So a couple things I need. I need vx and I need time. Ugh. Well, I don't know time, but I can solve for vx. vx is again right here. It's how far over I go in the x direction. So to get vx, it's going to be v naught cosine of theta. Well, that is going to be 10 times cosine of 30 degrees. Now, that, that solves my vx problem. I know what vx is. But how am I going to get time? Well, I can do that using my y dimension. Now, if a projectile is fired from the ground and lands back on the ground, then its delta y overall is zero. There's no change in my height. I start on the ground and I end on the ground. So, v naught y is not zero. It's going to be v naught sine of 30 degrees. Easily calculated. 10 sine 30. But what about that time? Because I need that for the delta x. Well, I can look at my delta y equation. Delta y equals v naught y t plus one-half a y t squared. And let's say we're on Earth, and we can assume that our gravity is negative 10 meters per second squared. Well, I know that I start on the ground and I end on the ground, which means my delta y is zero. This problem becomes dramatically easier after that, because if I have zero equals v naught y t plus one-half a y t squared, well, I can divide both sides by t. Now I have 0 equals v naught y plus 1 half a y t. Subtract over and solve for time. You can take that time, plug it in, and solve for delta x. Now, what about solving for maximum height? Well, one thing we know about the max height, our vy is zero. Knowing that, the velocity right there is zero. You could use kinematics and really any equation where you know v initial, it's v naught y, which you can calculate, and you know v final right to that point is zero. You could solve for this delta y max, that max height. 